You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Joining me on Two Guys and a Lot of Wine, I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And this is Jim's show today. <laughs> well, sorry, tonight we're going to talk all about acidity in wine. And we've done uh, similar shows in the past uh, with little experiments you could do at home uh, with the Body Basics show. That was, uh, that was the one we did with the milk where you, you know, tasted the milk and then judged uh, how thin or thick the milk was and you could taste how much body the wine had. We're going to do a similar experiment tonight with acid. Um, you know, if you think about acid in wine, uh, acid really kind of clarifies and, and heightens any kind of food that you're eating. Um, but wine is really probably the most acidic food that you'll ever consume in your life. Uh, so it's, interesting. It's, yeah, it's fascinating. You, th you think about uh, citrus fruits, those are going to be slightly more acidic than the wines we're going to taste tonight. But that's the only thing that you come across in your diet that's really got more acid in it than the wine. Uh, so so the, we're getting our science on tonight. A little bit of science. I'm going to try and tone it down just a bit. You know, there's... Uh, Mr. Science would be proud. I, I was going to say that when we were on Mr. Science, we touched on pH balance in wine just a little bit, and that does deal with acidity. Uh, so I'll, I'll give a, just a few comments about that during the show tonight, but I'm, I'm not going to make this a science-centric show. This is all about wine. That's true. And they're all whites tonight, right, Jim? Yes, uh, all whites. Uh, when you think of acid in wine, Usually white wines have more of an acidic characteristic to them uh, than the red wines do. You still get a little bit of acid in the red, um, but there are, there are a couple of different acids you're dealing with. You're dealing with uh, malic acid and um, tannin with red wine is actually an acid, um, but that's, we're not going to deal with that tonight. Okay, get, we're not going to get too deep for me. No, I, I'm going to try and keep it easy. Okay, I appreciate Try and keep that. it easy. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to drink a progression of wines tonight that have uh, no acidity at all, and that would be the Marsan grape, and then work all the way up to something that's incredibly acidic. That actually is, is very interesting because, you know, I, I'm a Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc fan, and I know people think that's a very acidic, which it is. And it is. It's citrusy. It is, yeah. But it's going to be very interesting to compare, compare those. Yes. We'll move up the, so we'll go up the, the progression, progression ladder. Yep. So to start this whole thing off, and you can do this at home uh, if you're, you want to drink along with us. We're going to start with orange juice, and this is a fresh squeeze, squeezed orange, and move to lemon juice and then lime juice. And this will get more and more acidic as we go through this. Now, people typically think of lemon as being the most acidic tart fruit that they can taste. Uh, but actually, a lime, when you measure the pH balance, lime is a, a just slightly more acidic than lemon. That's interesting. So, so what we'll do is we'll start off, we'll try a little bit of orange juice. And, you know, oranges are very sweet, so you're going you're gonna to get a sugar component with this. Oh, yeah, that's a fresh squeezed orange. Yes. That's good, Jeff. Fantastic. And this, if you look at the pH scale, the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, 0 being completely acidic, 14 being completely alkaline. Uh, 7, right in the middle, is neutral, which is where water is. Um, the orange juice that we just drank is about a th uh, 3. So we move to the lemon juice. This gets slightly more acidic. So this is about a uh, two, two and a half. I know that, that might be confusing because the, the orange juice is a bigger number, but you know, you're moving towards seven, which is neutral. Yeah, that's a really bold you little get a, kick You there. get a lot more acid with this, don't you? You sure do. And once again, both the orange juice and even this tasting right here is very similar to some of the wines we'll probably be tasting too that, in regards to what hits you. That's the same experience you're going to have. Is you know we're going to we're going to start with the Marsan. You're not going to taste any acid at all with that, and then we'll move to the Viognier, which again is very low acid, and then we're going to jump to the Sauvignon Blanc, and I haven't had this one, uh, but I hope uh, this really shows off a lot of acidity, and the Riesling is going to show a lot of acidity as well. And there are depending on you know what time of year you're watching the show, there are uh, places for each one of these wines depending on what is going on outside in regards to what you're looking for, right? In regards to a white wine. 
you might want a more acidic wine. Exactly. You might want a lighter exactly. wines. De depending on you know, yeah, what kind of situation you're in uh, or what you're eating. You know, a, lot, a lot of times people are trying to pair food and wine together. Um, if you're having a, a fish with a butter sauce, you probably do want something very acidic to kind of contrast with the fish. And I know you're a big proponent of dish drink, which you like, but certain white wines, you really, it doesn't go well with certain foods, I believe. Exactly. There are bad pairings out there. Absolutely. Um, and I, you know, but if, again, I go back to my rule of thumb. If that's what you like to drink, go ahead and drink it. Uh, just realize that there are better pairings out there. So let's give this, this last juice a shot. This is the lime juice. This is going to be the most acidic thing we're going to have tonight. And that's... Wow. You, you can taste how different that was from the lemon. Sure. It just dries your mouth out as soon as you taste that. It sure does. That's about a two on the scale, the pH balance scale. So if you, if you remember, seven's right there in the middle. That's water. That's neutral. The closer you get to acidic, completely acidic, uh, they say battery acid is about a zero. Uh, this is a two. You so, know, before you even pour the first one, which, which is a really important point for our viewers who might be either novices or getting into white wines, Depending on what you like here on the table in regards to the orange, lime, or lemon, you might not like a certain wine if it has certain strong characteristics exactly. of either the orange, the lime, or the lemon. So this is actually a very good thing we've got it going is. on here. And it, I, this is why I always say uh, there's, you know, everybody's palate is different, which is why everybody prefers different wines, which is why there's a, there's a market <clears throat> for every wine that's out there. You know, the people drink white Zinfandel because they like something very sweet. And I will say, I think people are much more picky with whites than reds. I think people can just drink any red a lot of times. But whites, I think people get a little bit more picky. And probably because they skew more towards very acidic or mm -hmm. less acidic. Or there's something, they want something very sweet. Yeah. I'm very curious for our first uh, science thing. All right, let's, let's, try the, let's try the Marsan. This is a, a very rare grape here in the United States. Um, this comes from the northern Rhone Valley of France. It's a, it's a common grape in France, but they don't, you know, when you buy French wine, they don't name it by the grape varietal. They just say it's, this is a Northern Rhone white wine. Um, so it's, it's very recently come here to the United States and been marketed as Marsan, which is the grape varietal. But it's going to have almost no acid at all. Hardly any aroma either, unless you really yeah. get your nose in there. Yeah. Now it's, I don't want to call this flabby. That's, that's uh, a no. misnomer, but it's compared to what we just drank with, with the orange um, lemon and lime juice, it's kind of flat. It's, it's leaving my mouth kind of... Wanting more. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But once again, I actually like that sometimes in a white wine. I don't want the white wine that I might be drinking to overpower anything. Because sometimes I'll drink white first in the evening, anyways. So I don't want my mouth to be yeah. too uh, overstimulated. And if, yeah, if you're doing uh, chicken with kind of an herb flavoring to it, uh, this would be a great pair because it's not going to overpower the chicken. Um, and I, you know, there are two two theories to pairing wine and food. You want to contrast with the food, or you want to complement it. So if you're doing a chicken and herb sauce, you could complement it by doing this Marsan. Or you could do a contrast by doing something very acidic, like the Sauvignon Blanc that we're going to have later. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, people say, should you, can you spin white in a glass? Of course you can. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're trying to get the aroma out. Um, yeah, your friend was on our show asking that question last year. And spinning the, spinning the glass just gets air, oxygen into the wine, gets the aroma up to your nose. Well, that's very similar to the orange juice, obviously. Yeah. Um, but also, just as a wine itself, I like that. I haven't had that one before. It's, it's a great wine. Um, I've had this. Uh, this is my third time drinking this now. I, I enjoy it. Um, I, I tend to lean towards Sauvignon Blancs that have a lot of acidity. So this is a complete departure from what I normally drink when I drink a white wine. But I do enjoy it. It's, it's great. There, yeah, I, I know what you mean by that. I, I, I like a strong Sauvignon Blanc, but at the same time, I think I like a little bit more variety in my whites, and I don't mm -hmm. get quite as fussy. Yeah. I, I, I like this a little bit. Of not more than a Sauvignon Blanc, but it's in a different category. That I exactly, exactly. It's a great, very enjoyable. great way to change the pace from what you normally drink. Yes, very enjoyable. Let's move on to the Viognier. This is another very low acidic wine. And this is a varietal that you see a little more often here in the United States. Um, you know, Marsan you never hear of, but the, every once in a while you bump into a Viognier yes. or a white wine that has Viognier blended into it. So this is a little more common here in the United States. But again, very, very low acidic. 
A little bit more of an aroma bouquet than the first one. This is more pronounced, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you've got these in the right order. I can see the little step this, up. The, yeah, this, the whole point of this was to start very low acid, move all the way up. Um, you get a little minerality with this. Uh, but there's no acidic bite to it at all. Uh, when you think of white wines and the acid, normally you're tasting that right on the side of the tongue. Uh, when you get that really intense acidic taste, you're getting that right on the side of the tongue. Yeah. You, you're, you're absolutely right. I'm just, I, you really paired those particularly well because, you know, people who are watching this show specifically say, well, what's the point with the oranges and lemons? This is e e exactly the characteristics you're getting from the first one with the orange yeah. juice and the second one with the lime. It's, it's really uh, quite noticeable. That, that's the whole point of this exercise is to show you the progression of, you know, you're, you're in the same family here with citrus fruits and we're doing the same family here, white wines, but you're going from very low acidity, very high acidity. I like this one a lot too. Um, obviously it's a different type of uh, wine than the first one we tasted. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little bit more lingering on my palate. Um, I sort of like the first one as just a casual drinking white wine. This one is a little bit more detailed, a little bit more, com not complex, but a little bit more worthy of a little bit more um, definition in regards to yeah. what you're tasting in your mouth. Yeah. yeah, this is a little more complex. It is, yeah. Uh, I would serve this with a fried calamari with the hot peppers. You know, this, it's a, it'd be a good background wine, um, but at the same time, you know, the, the hot peppers, this would kind of cool your mouth after having the hot pepper. Uh, it would, but it would work well with any kind of seafood. Jim, you made an excellent point because I love hot food. I love spicy food, whether it's uh, Thai or just anything hot. And a lot of times when you're at a restaurant, you're eating something spicy, and I still like to drink wine. Mm -hmm. You want to pair that hot spiciness with a particular type of wine. And some of our viewers might not know what to get. They'll just right. order a Chardonnay, and that's yeah, not going to no, work. No, that's not the right wine. Uh, normally, I steer towards a Riesling, and we're, we're going to try one of those later. Uh, but the Viognier would work really well with it Thai sure food would. also. Absolutely. And uh, what's, even, what's even great about that is it, because I like my food so spicy, I think this would really cut it pretty quickly. So I can still yeah. enjoy the spice, take a small sip of this, and not be overwhelmed and start sweating at the dinner table. Exactly. Carrie doesn't yeah. like that. <laughs> no, that. That's really good. That's, it's, it's fat. What, give me the idea of this show. Was it our Body Basic show? Uh, yeah. There's, you know, there's, uh, I, I'll be honest, I stole this from the web. There's a whole series of wine workouts you can do. It's on foodandwine.com. Uh, so the body basics and this one, uh, there's a tannin exercise, which we can try in a future, future episode. But ours are better than the ones you saw online, right? Well, you know, you get to get to drink the wines here. That's true. Instead of just reading about them. And we're, we're cuter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that's, that's a great progression. I really enjoyed that. All right, so we're going to move on now to... This oh, is yeah, the Sauvignon Blanc, Blanc that you Sauvignon brought. Blanc, yes, that, that's a Spanish Sauvignon Blanc. It's probably not going to be quite as um, citrusy as a Marlboro. Um, but, you know, I, I think it w might be. I mean, uh, you know, my palate probably isn't as pronounced with the over citrusy like Carrie likes and what you like. Uh, I know the Marlboro is to be the most acidic or the most citrusy yeah. in the Sauvignon Blanc family. I actually find them a little too acidic or too citrusy sometimes. Um, I thought this was close to it that I thought works for me. Have you had this before? Uh, it's been a while since okay. I've had this one, yeah. so I took right. a shot. All I right. took it out of my cellar. Mm -hmm. I had like two bottles, and I think we might have had one maybe a year or two ago, but depending on when we had it, we don't mm -hmm. remember. And I didn't keep a record of it, unfortunately. Yeah. So um, you got to peel those labels, Bob. Peel, well, you know, peel the label, make some notes. You're right, and uh, <laughs> I, we'll talk actually about an application that you can get for your phone later on. But the peeling of the labels is good, but there's also apps now that you just take a picture yeah. and it's always stored. So yeah, I'm, I'm being too old-fashioned now with the paper. <laughs> But I was, yeah, I was hoping uh, to show a, a really acidic Sauvignon Blanc here. It's citrusy. It is. And I, I get some of the acid component that I was looking for. Uh, it doesn't have as harsh of a bite as like the Kono, which is a, a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, uh, or the Matua. Um, and you'll find the Matua everywhere here in Connecticut. Yeah, actually, Matua is actually in a lot of restaurants, too. Love the Matua. It, 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 Matua is more citrusy than this particular but th one. This is good. This is uh, almost buttery, uh, a little bit, it reminds me a little of a Chardonnay. It's got a little kick to it. But it, at the, yeah, at the very end, it's got that acidic bite to it. You know, not that we have one, but 
I will say the Marlboro tends to be one of probably the most citrus Sauvignon Blanc, which is why people who like that tend to always yeah, lean you, towards a Marlboro. Yeah, Marlboro, anything from northern New Zealand is going to be really acidic. Really and, and powerful. Have, yeah. And if you like that, that's fine. Um, sometimes, though, it can be a little too overpowering for some people. Um, but there's a place for it, at least. I, that's actually what I tend to lean towards. Uh, if, if I'm drinking Sauvignon Blanc, I want something with a lot of bite, a lot of acid. So that's, that's what I look for. Well, you know, I, I, I think we never go wrong with anything Spanish. So I, when I saw that I had a Sauvignon Blanc with Mendoza in the cellar, I thought, well, we never really have a problem with anything Spanish. It always mm -hmm. tends to be good. Though I probably should have realized it might not have the same kick as uh, you might have been looking for. for uh, you know, that's, there's a, a side conversation that we can have here about you know, the, the region and how that affects the grape. You can grow a grape varietal. Chardonnay is a great example. Uh, you grow Chardonnay in California or Australia, which are very hot regions, and that tends to produce a wine uh, that doesn't have a whole lot of bite to it. It's very soft, not, not very acidic. But if you have a, a white Bordeaux, excuse me, a white Burgundy from France, uh, that's going to be the Chardonnay grape. But because it's in a cooler climate, it's got a lot more bite to it. Uh, and it drinks almost like a Sauvignon Blanc. And I've had, this has happened to me on a number of occasions where I've had a, a white Burgundy and thought that I was drinking a Sauvignon Blanc. And in fact, it's Chardonnay. Actually, that, that's another good science point that the colder the region or the environment, the more citrusy prone the grape is going to taste. Typically, yeah. Yeah, that, and that depends on the grape varietal, but that's, yeah, that's a good generalization to make. Do we make anything um, close to a Sauvignon Blanc here in Connecticut or the Northeast? Um, I, I, it's been a couple of years since I've toured the Connecticut Wine Trail. Um, I know the, you know the Valley of Angels is the big white cellar here. In the, Which is good, the, yes. It yeah, is you see good. that in a lot of stores and a lot of people drink it. Um, it's, it doesn't have a huge acidic component to it, but it's, it's a decent white. Uh, it's, it's, I guess the best way to describe it, it's a more rounded white wine. It's, um, you know, it doesn't jump out at you and say, hey, I'm really acidic. But it's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good table wine. Well, once again, I, I thought there would be a little bit more pronounced what you were looking for, and I apologize. It's a little bit on the mind no, that's, side. Hey, this is, it's still, you know, you contrast the Sauvignon Blanc from the Viognier and the Marsan. And it's, it's, there's, still a, yeah, there's still a difference. There is a noticeable acidic uh, jump in acidity. So. But i got to say, I, I, we'll get to it in a moment, but... I'm very excited to be tasting a German wine on the show tonight because I have always loved German wine. I've loved Rieslings, and we've never had a Riesling on the show. We haven't. And I had uh, an Alsatian Riesling picked out for the show, and I went back. I'd, I'd, consumed, I'd had bought this a couple of times at the store, and I went back to get it again, and they were out. And the wine merchant there steered me towards uh, the Ans Ansfei Drei, which is one, two, three in that German. That was good. And I got German <laughs> in me, and that was good. <laughs> Uh, this, so this is a true German Riesling, and typically people think of Riesling and they think, oh, it's going to be very syrupy, very sweet. Um, the Riesling grape is sweet, but it's also incredibly acidic, and that's why we're drinking this last. Uh, if you look at the, the acidic scale, you know, Marsan's all the way down here, Riesling's all the way up here. And the reason uh, the winemakers want all that acid in there is to balance out all the sweetness from the grape. The grape is very sweet to begin with, so they want to have a lot of acid to balance that out. Well, you know, my first experience with Riesling goes back a while, and uh, for our West Hartford natives here, old school in it, uh, Edelweiss restaurant that was here in town probably back in the early 90s, a German, fantastic German restaurant. Mm. And uh, I had my first Riesling there, I think in probably 1992, 91 or 92, maybe around that time. And I loved it. Now, they, it was an authentic German restaurant, just mm -hmm. like, um, was it West Side or East Side there is in New Britain? Uh, you know the one I'm talking about in New Britain, but this one was in West Hartford Center. It's called Edelweiss, and uh, they had fantastic German food and fantastic Riesling. And I just fell in love with them. I just, they only had one, I, the one that I tasted was delicious, and I'd since, after that experience, looked into Rieslings. Mm -hmm. But I think Rieslings are fantastic. They are. And I think what happens with American wine consumers is they typically find a, a bad brand or a bad winemaker making Riesling and they get turned off to the whole varietal and if they have a really good German Riesling or an Alsatian Riesling uh, I think they would fall in love with it. Well I, I cheated I took that sip before that, you. No go ahead go ahead. Um, but I will say and uh, this mm. is fascinating to me just fascinating you get the same 
sucking of the moisture yes. right here yep. as you did when we had the, uh, the lemon juice or the, the lime juice. Yeah, it's, it's acidic. It, the great thing about acid, though, is that it makes your mouth water. It, you get that sucking feeling. That I'm getting that right feeling, now. Actually. But at the same time, your mouth waters, which is completely different from tannin in wine. If you think of red wine and it's really high in tannins, that just turns your mouth into a desert. There, there is no mouth watering sensation. It's just all the moisture is gone. Now, is there, do you know a little bit about the science of why that happens or what's going on? The, with tannins, uh, though, the tannin in the wine is grabbing on to proteins in your mouth. So it kind of gloms onto them. And that's, that's that kind of puckering sensation you get with tannin. And that's why your mouth turns into a desert. So I know this particular Riesling, I know if I'm mistaken, I apologize, but there are three types of the scales for Riesling. There's, uh, yeah, there's a trocken, which is, uh, I think, a very dry wine. And I, I, I'm not familiar enough with the other two. I can't recall. And I should have wrote that My down. German's not that good. But, uh, you know, we can do a whole Riesling show and, and investigate that. And this is the trocken? This is a trocken, yes. Because uh, this definitely has the... Uh, the lime characteristics mm -hmm. that we're talking about in this little experiment that we're doing. Yeah. And uh, if you know, if, if you're trying to get some idea of what will happen when you drink Latrocan, this particular one, you're going to get that little bit of both puckering, and your mouth's going to water a little bit. And for me, that means I just want more wine. Exactly. Yeah. And there's there's really not a sweet component to this at all. There is not. It's usually when you drink a Riesling, you get some kind of sweetness, uh, and it can go all the way to very syrupy. Uh, it's sticky sweet, which is what turns people off. Uh, but this has very little sweetness to it at all. I, I love this. Uh, this is why, like I said, I mean, Rieslings are fascinating to me because there is not an ounce of sweetness in here or butteriness or syrupiness. This is just, to me, what I enjoy about why it's fantastic. How did you find this? This, uh, I, you know, I went back to the store where I, I normally got the Alsatian and they were out of it, um, and the, the wine merchant steered me towards this. So I want to thank Bricks from Boston. That's the wine store in Boston. Um, they've got a great selection of Rieslings, and I'll be going back there again for more of this. Got to have them on the show. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, we're going to have to do a remote. We're going to have to take the cameras up to Boston. I think you two might be up for that. You know, <laughs> get him a chance to get him out of the office here and uh, travel up to Boston. But you know, Jim, I gotta say, I mean, I really am impressed with that reasoning. If you don't mind, I, I want one more little splash. Yeah, of that. absolutely. Only because I'm really fascinated by just how lime characteristic that is, in regards to what the experiment you're trying to portray here. And keep in mind, you know, when you drink Riesling, uh, this pairs really well with fatty foods. I mean, we've talked about this on our Thanksgiving special. Um, you know, there, there are certain wines that you, you want to steer away from when you're, when you're eating a Thanksgiving dinner or any kind of meal that has a, a fatty characteristic to it. So uh, if you're having pate, um, if you're having uh, chicken thighs or, you know, the Thanksgiving turkey, the dark meat, uh, you want to steer away from the Cabernet Sauvignon and move more towards something that's really high in acid. So you want to have a Sauvignon Blanc or a Riesling. You know, I got to say, I, I love holidays, but you really, it's very difficult to pair reds with turkey. The, yeah, the only thing that really works well is a red Zinfandel. And, and that's, again, because of the high alcohol content. Because, you, you know, you have big family gatherings. People always put out red wine because they feel they have to. I'd be much more comfortable drinking whites for most yeah. of the food for things, in my own personal opinion, at least. Because generally you get the turkey, you get the stuffing, uh, um, but uh, these are just, it, this particular reason is just, it blows me away. I'm going to have to go and buy some of these. Uh, yeah, the go show. look for this. Uh, my mother-in-law hates any kind of sweet wine at all, uh, but I think she would fall in love with this also. Now, we this didn't cover the price points from the beginning here. Uh, everything here is right around $20. Um, so I, I'm not, I, yeah, not going to speak about the Sauvignon Blanc because you got that one. But. Uh, 13, between 13 and 14 in that price range. Okay. So the, uh, the Coupe Marsan you can find between 18 and 22. Uh, the same for the Viognier. And the Unspied Dry, I think, was 25, right around $25. By the way, your, your German sounded pretty good there. So. I, I worked hard on that. <laughs> now, is Riesling something that you keep a lot of on hand for yourself? Typically, it's not in my normal lineup. Um, I have a couple of bottles in, in case I have something spicy. You know, I, I eat Thai food a lot, and I've typically gone to Jacob's Creek for their Riesling. Uh, but I think I'll start stocking up on this now. This is, uh, this is just a step above. I mean, the, the Jacob's Creek is a great Riesling, but it has that kind of sweet characteristic to it. 
which I don't get with this. You know, I, I think we have to go over one more time so our viewers can be completely understanding of what we're doing here. If you're not a big white wine person, or if you are a white wine person, but you're afraid to try different varietals, mm -hmm. what you're seeing here on the table in regards to the orange, the lemon, and the lime is actually a fantastic comparison of the grape varietal we're drinking tonight. Right. And if you're looking in the store for, to try something, you'll at least have a better understanding of to, okay, I see the Marsan, I see a Sauvignon Blanc, I see the Trocan. I'm going to say, because I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, you got it. You nailed you're, it. You're, you're going to have some idea of what you're going to expect when you get it home. Yeah. And, and we've gotten into some kind of obscure grapes tonight, too. I mean, you don't see Marsan ever. Uh, and the only reason I found out about it was doing research for this show. You know, I think, uh, you, I don't know if you were here. Yeah, you were here. I think uh, Jacob from uh, Wise Old Dog might have had a white on the show one time that had a Marsan grape in it. Okay. I know he's big with the uh, obscure type grape varietals, and I think he might have had a Marsan on the show. He tends to skew towards the French varietals. And he does. He's, he, he, he likes his French like I do. And, uh, but I don't remember what, you know, what it was exactly. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought everything we tasted tonight was a fantastic representation of the type of, uh, type of grape along with the citrus characteristics. So, bravo. bravo. Thank you. So our remaining minutes, Jim, um, what other science projects do you have lined up for me? Well, I think, I think we are going to do a tannin show. I like that we'll idea, play around tannin show. Um, I, I think the, the best way to, to do that is to contrast tannin with kind of the silky characteristics you get in wine. So we'll, maybe we'll do some Cab Franc, which is typically very silky, and then do some Cabernet Sauvignon, which is very tannic. Well, what's great about wine, and you know, we've been doing so many shows over the last four years or whatever, you can never touch them all. You can't get to them all. There are thousands and thousands of wine varietals out there. Um, I, I'm reading the biography of Robert Parker right now, and he tastes about 100,000 wines every year. And there's no way you and I are ever going to come close to that. I, I bow to you, sir. Yes. I don't know how you do it. That's, uh, I know they don't drink it, obviously. They he taste spits. It, spits. He spits. That. But he lines up 100 bottles every day and just goes through them and... It's amazing how, how much wine he has tasted. Well, you know, I will say that uh, the years I've been doing the show and, uh, you know, just learning about a lot of different wines, the guests that we've had on the show and both of us having different tastes and different uh, characteristics of what we like in a wine, it's just been a fantastic experience after mm -hmm. all these years. And uh, we're always learning, which is why we do the show. Exactly. That, that's what I love. You know, I go to wine tastings and I'm always looking for that next great varietal that I've never heard of. Or that and they're coming, I'm sure, because yeah. who knows what's coming Oh, next. yeah. So, well, Jim, great idea tonight, man. Thank you. Awesome. So, as always, whenever you want to get more information about the show. Uh, yeah, you can find us on Facebook. P please friend us. If you have a question or comment for us, uh, we'll answer it right here on the show. Uh, just send us a message, message through Facebook. And don't forget, you can watch previous episodes of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine on YouTube.com or right here on WHCTV.org. And we are still trying to upload more of our shows. I think we're only up, we only have like 13. Or we're getting there. We're getting them up. We got, we, they're getting we, them up. So keep, be patient, but watch us at whctv.org on demand and see all the shows. So Jim, thanks again. And until next you, time, keep Jim keep and I in your wine cellar. cellar.